You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it. You got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out. Basic to complex. This is Options Boot Camp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, your Options Boot Camp drill instructors, Mark Longo and Dan Passarelli, will break it all down for you. Most options trading platforms are commission-free, and there are some that don't charge per contract fees. Public.com goes a step further. When you trade options on public, there are no commissions, no per contract fees, and you get a rebate of up to 18 cents per contract traded. That means it costs less than zero dollars per transaction. In other words, instead of paying to place options trades, you literally earn money, and that money can add up fast. If you trade 1,000 option contracts on public, you'll earn up to $180 in rebates. 10,000 contracts, up to almost $1,200. It's pretty obvious why Nerd Wallet recently gave options trading on public five out of five stars. Because public really stands out for the cost of its options trades. Their words, not ours. If you want to start paying less than $0 to trade options, check out public.com and get a rebate of up to $0.18 cents per contract traded. Paid for by Public Investing. Options not suitable for all investors and carry significant risk. Full disclosures in podcast description, U.S. members only. Fall in boot. It's time to get into peak options trading shape. It's time for Options Boot Camp. All right, everybody, welcome back to Options Boot Camp. For Dan and I, it's like we just did this because we did. It's episode two of our double header. If you want to join us live for this, check them out early. You don't have to wait a week. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. You also get exclusive shows. All sorts of fun over there. I'm cranking because we got to get to it, listeners. I am joined once again by the black-hatted one fresh from the big MTM annual extravaganza. None other than Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring. Mr. P, welcome back to OBC for episode due of our doubleheader, sir. Hey, it is great to be back. Uh, I'm ready. What are we, we going to talk about today? We got good stuff to talk about. Let's, what are we going to talk let's about? Let's find out. Listeners take the reins today, sir. A little bit of the old mail call. Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. All right, everybody, welcome to the mail call, the portion of the show where you folks take the reins. I got so excited, I forgot to mention this week's five-star reviewer here. Uh, this came in, I believe, uh, via YouTube, actually. You can review us on any platform you like, like a star, a comment, a rating, review. All that stuff does help new people discover the show. Just like iOS Alive said on YouTube, he said, the Options Insider, cool content. Well, thank you very much. Right back at you. You're a cool guy or gal for taking the time to leave a rating, a review. All that stuff, the end of the day, listeners does help the legion of new traders out there, and they are, trust me, they are legion, discover the content. But let's get out to our questions of the week. I know Dan is champing at the bit to get to his MTM question of the week. Before we get there, let's set the stage of some of our previous questions of the week that we have to pay off, Then we'll get to this week's question of the week as well, which is a, which is a doozy. First, on the show, the last time we were live, not today, but a couple of weeks ago, oh, we were talking about all things GameStop. It was obviously hot. Roaring Kitty very much in the headlines. You said there's a lot of debate about GameStop lately. 
Some believe there is shady business afoot and the stock is being clearly manipulated for nefarious purposes. Others say it's just a blatant overreach by the regulators. Where do you fall? Gave you folks three choices, listeners. Shady business is afoot. The regulators just want headlines or who cares? Dan, where do you fall on this uh, very, very epic question? And B, where do you think our audience lined up, sir? Mm, <clears throat> well, I mean, I think it's probably shady business is afoot. Um, and I, I mean, I think the regulators should not want the headlines that there are, but I, I don't think they really understand how markets work anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about this uh, a couple years ago when it first started. Like, even if there were good intentions with some pe on some people's part, I mean, that is the literal definition of collusion, uh, which is illegal. Uh, I mean, you can't do that. Um, so we're just revisiting that and it's just more collusion, but, um, I, I don't know, I guess because they say that they're, you know, trying to stick it to the man somehow that, uh, let's government officials on, you know, some of them say that, uh, it's okay, but it's, it, it's not, we have markets for price discovery. Like they have to be fair. So, yeah, so I, I, I think people probably also think that. I think our listeners might think that. Once again, sir, you are in touch with the pulse of the audience. 62.3% saying shady business is afoot. 24.6%, uh, so almost a quarter of you don't care. I get it. And then 13.1% of you say the regulators just want the headlines. Uh, we also asked, I think the last time we were live, it was Fed week. And we asked, hey, should the Fed cut, cut rates this week? Pretty much 70% of you said no, which is actually lighter than what the Fed Watch was saying. The Fed Watch was saying 99.6% probability of no. So uh, you folks were right on the money on that one, obviously. Uh, we also have a couple of fun ones. The one this week, and of course, one that it was a flash poll they put up earlier this week, just inspired by a, a fun trade we noticed on our option block show, Dan. We saw somebody scooped up 63,000 of the July 65 calls. Yes, 65 in VIX. Uh, they paid four cents for those bad boys. Uh, so we thought we'd put it out to the audience, Dan. What do you think about this volatility trading, quote unquote, strategy? Are you a fan? I mean, Matt's been on here talking about garbage and junk VIX calls and how they can surprise you sometimes. So you think junk VIX calls can pop, they could work, or you think it's a complete waste of capital, or you don't care, it's just somebody hedging, or you prefer it maybe a different way, maybe as a bit of a ratio, which I think is actually how it went up. Uh, Mr. Dan, sir, where do you fall on these garbage VIX calls? Are you a fan? Are you not a fan? Waste of capital? Just a hedge? You prefer them as a ratio. And where do you think our audiences fall? Which ones were those again? July 65s for four cents. Oh, my goodness. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, that's jeez. Uh, and how many contracts again? 63,000. So small size for you. Yeah. I mean, geez, Louise, that's a lot of money. That's like, wait, is my math right? Is that a million dollars? Quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, a quarter of a million. Right, 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 right. Um, I mean, geez, I mean, I would call that a lottery ticket if it was like a hundred lot, but um, Sony's putting a lot of dough into there. Um, geez, Louise, man. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's strategic in such a way where somebody thinks that we can get enough of a pop in the very short term future where they can put on the second part of that leg or something. I don't know. It's weird, man. That, that's a, that's a weird trade. I think our audience has been infected by Mr. Matt because they said, uh, junk VIX calls can pop 59.3% of them. They like it. Uh, that's a decent flyer. And you know, Matt has borne it out. He's been on here. We're just talking about it again with him. I think yesterday on the advisors option, about you know, some of the back testing he's done and how these things tend to hold their value longer than you think. They don't really suffer from decay. And then if you get any sort of movement, the skew kicks in and they can double or triple. I mean, you're not going to make, you know, a million percent on these, but you, you can do all right. Sometimes most of the time it's going to go the way of the dodo, but it will last longer than you think. 60% of our audience nearly thinking that's a good do. 22.2% uh, saying a complete waste of capital. 14.8% say you don't care. It's just somebody hedging a portfolio and 3.7% only. That surprised me like it as a, a backspread. So a ratio, maybe selling one buying five, which is how these things usually tend to go up here, the listeners. All right, fascinating stuff. Let's get out to our actual question of the week, which is live right now, Mr. Dan. 
We're saying, hey, you know, it's the start of summer. Quite literally just started this week, officially. The weather is hot. The realized vol is low. Which option strategies do you anticipate using the most during this traditionally quiet period until Labor Day, Mr. Dan? We gave him three choices and the infamous other. You're going long premiums or long calls, puts or verticals. You're going short the opposite way, short calls, puts or verticals. Maybe you're going some more esoteric stuff like calendars and diagonals. Or you have the infamous other. Mr. Dan, uh, if you have a vote, have at it. Then B, how do you think people are allocating their options capital in the usually quiet summer months, sir? Well, I mean, it's... I, see, I think that it's kind of a weird market, personally. Um, I guess you can always say that at any given time. Yeah, you know, it's weird because it's arguably overbought. And, you know, if you get good market news, the market goes up. But if you get bad market news, the market goes up. Uh, its P ratio is not sky high, but overpriced. So, I mean, I don't like saying it, but probably just selling put spreads is going to get you through the summer. Um, I, I'm not doing that because I just, I, I feel like we ought to get the, some sort of pullback at some point, but I don't know, you know, just playing the odds. That's what statistically should work. Not the first person, even this week, to come on this network and say, maybe uh, you sit out for a while. <laughs> yeah. These markets are kind of weird. Uh, you got a lot of pros saying that, listeners. It's certainly something to bear in mind. Right now, our audience is split almost exactly between short calls, puts, and verticals, and then calendars getting some love, both around 44%. A long call only getting a little over 11% right now. So, that, again, this is early early blush. I expect those numbers uh, to evolve out there, listeners, as we evolve on the show into the market taker question of the week. And now it's the moment you've been waiting for. It's time for the market taker question of the week. I know, listeners, I miss the logins, too. What can I say? That's a Dan Passarelli original. We have to use it. Uh, composed <laughs> by Mr. P himself. Mr. Dan, sir, what is your question of the week? So we were talking about this briefly on the last show, and uh, somebody actually <laughs> DM'd me and said, is it true that you're done with in-person events? And, <clears throat> well, we are done with our annual retreat that we do. Uh, we're not going to do that anymore. Kind of bittersweet. I, I love doing them, but I, I think I can serve our community better in different ways uh, with the amount of time that I put into those. But w we are doing our mastermind events still, uh, at least this year. Uh, we're going to do two of them. And so um, anybody who's real serious about their trading and wants to come and hang out with me and John in person in a very, very small group, three to five people, as a matter of fact, is all we're taking. Um, you know, if you, if you think you're qualified for it and you're ready for something like that, hit me up, uh, just email me, Dan at market And, um, I, I'd be happy to set up a call and tell you about it and see if it's a good fit for you. I have been known to make an appearance on those in the past listeners. So whether that's a pro or a con for you is that's up to you, but, uh, they are fun events. They usually come around September, Dan, is that when they usually happen? Yeah, actually the SIBO one, we're going to do it a little bit earlier this, this year. Well, the Chicago one, I should say, uh, August 7th, 8th, and 9th. It's oh, coming around. Coming up. Yeah. Get your reservations in there, listeners. As we get on out to what our listeners have on the brain this week, let's go out to this first one. Uh, just Pavlovich. That's his handle. I like it. He says, what if I buy stock and write multiple covered calls against it in different expires? I'm guessing maybe English, not his first language, but hey, it's a good question, Pavlovich. He says, for example, if I bought a stock for $10, then sold a one-week out-of-the-money call for $0.15, cents, and then a two-week out-of-the-money call on the same strike for $0.25. Cent. I'm still covered on most of it, and I've managed to increase my income flow. Is there a name for this strategy? Yeah, it's a lot of short delta, naked, not short deltas, <laughs> a.k.a. don't do this. But yeah, I can see why it's attractive. Instead of making $0.15, cents, you're now making $0.40. Cents. Uh, but Mr. Dan, uh, I'm not a huge fan of this. I, I know... You probably are not as well. Why don't you tell Mr. Pavlovich why, why folks aren't just, just doubling up on the old cover call trade, sir? 
Yeah, I mean, man, I'll tell you, the best thing you can ever do when you're trading a strategy where maybe you have a question about it is model it out. And if you look at, uh, you know, a P&L diagram that, you know, your broker should be able to draw out for you, you'll see that once the stock gets high enough, uh, so I guess this case would be around uh, $10.40 or so, um, the profits start going down and eventually turn into losses because you end up being net short uh, deltas with this whole thing. Um, and you can end up losing a lot if the stock really takes off to the upside. Now, obviously, if you're doing a covered call, you're not doing it on a stock that uh, your opinion is that it's likely to take off to the upside. Um, but um, if it does, you can run into some pretty darn big trouble with those basically, because basically one of those calls is covered by the stock, but the other one is naked. Naked. It's naked. Yes. <laughs> uh, Lisa. Yeah. So who is this Pavlovich? Just think of it. Forget about the stock. Forget about the first call. This is just naked short a call on that strike. So if you're okay with that and all the risk involved in that, and also we've all seen brokers really wise up to that risk in the post meme stock era. So they're going to margin the hell out of you for this. So for the extra 25 cents you are collecting, you're taking an order of magnitude more risk and you're tying up a lot more capital than you would have with the original covered call trade. So it's not worth it. Don't do this, Pavlovich. You're not for 25 cents. The juice ain't worth the squeeze, as the kids say out there. Let's keep going out there. We're going to juice. Let's go to this next one. Green banana. I like my bananas a little more yellow, but hey, you know, to each their own out there. Green banana wants to know. I'm having a hard time understanding the relationship between gamma and delta. Any tips? Well, Mr. P, as the guy who literally wrote the book, no one else has written anything about gamma and delta. Just Dan. Dan, you literally wrote the book, sir. What do you have to say here for Mr. Green Banana? Understanding the difference between, and the relationship, I should say, between gamma and delta. Well, Mr. Green Banana, and you know, there's like a perfect window for bananas. You know, you, know, you, yeah, you they, buy them. They last like a day. They start off yeah. green, they have that one nice yellow day, and then they're brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, you know, you, you want to make money, forget about option trading. Figure out how to keep bananas, uh, you know, in the perfect state for like size five. theta in banana. You don't think about banana theta, but it's it's huge. <laughs> banana theta. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, the best way to think about the relationship between gamma and delta is forget about <clears throat> forget about gamma for a second. Um, Think about think about the delta of an option relative to whether it's in, at, or out of the money, right? So, like, in the money options have in well, and let's just look at calls. It's the opposite for puts. In the money calls have deltas above fifty. If it's very in the money, it's a hundred. Uh, at the money options have deltas of about fifty. Out of the money options have deltas less than 50. And if it's really out of the money, it's zero, right? So they just like look at an option chain and you can observe that, right? So to understand gamma, all you have to do is think about the fact that the stock ends up going up and down all day long, all week long, all month long, all year long. So any given option is always getting more in or out of the money. So its delta is always getting bigger or smaller, right? That's what gamma measures. It just makes that a more pr precise statement. It tells you exactly how much bigger or smaller your delta is getting as the stock goes up or down as your option gets more in or out of the money. You know, while you were doing that, I was uh, contacting Chiquita, offering to calculate their banana theta for them. I think there's a, a new business. There's, that could be some money there. No one's ever done that before, Dan. So... If I could put you, every, every banana you buy has a sticker. This has three days worth of theta. Get on it. You know, imagine, imagine who wouldn't be willing to pay more for that banana. The, the millions that would roll in off calculating that banana theta listeners. I'm, I'm going to get on that after the show. <laughs> but let's keep on rolling. Let's go out here. We got good handles this week, Dan. I don't know. People are on their A game on the handle side. Lord Walrus. <laughs> goo goo ka -choo. Yeah, Lord Walrus. Maybe he is a bit of a Beatles fan out here. He says... I agree with the use case of selling puts to get into stocks at lower prices. Well, I'm glad you agree there, Lord Walrus. He says, but what do you, what do, you do about the potential for rips higher? 
I'm thinking about names like SMR that have popped hard recently. Yes, it has. We've been talking about it on some of our other shows. Trading 11.32 today, up 38 cents or three and a half percent. It was trading, you know, seven and a half bucks not that long ago, a few sessions ago. So things have been moving hard. But he says, I'm thinking about names like SMR that have popped hard recently. I'm short the seven put, but the stock has already rallied to the 11 strike and my puts are irrelevant. I'm happy to keep the premium, but I'd obviously prefer to have the profits on the stock. How do you negotiate this tricky situation? Thank you very much. If you take the time to read this, I know that both of you are very busy and I appreciate any effort you can spend on my question. Well, you're a very nice and pleasant and polite fellow you are, Mr. Lord Walrus. I tip my cap to you in return. Thank you for such a, a well thought out question. And you're right. This is the other side of selling puts to get into stock. Maybe the dark side. Maybe there's two dark sides. Obviously, the rip down is is really dark because that's going to cost you money. But ripping to the upside, also unwelcome for put sellers. You're keeping your premium. So that's always good. And as you say, you made some money. I don't know. I haven't looked at the, the options on the seven strike well, a few weeks ago. You're probably getting pretty decent juice for those, probably close to at least 50 cents, if not more. So you're, you're sitting on some profits there, which is never a bad thing. But if your intention was to buy the stock, then yeah, you missed out on roughly a, a $4 move, if not more. So... There's a couple of things you could do there. Obviously, you could buy the stock. That's an easy way to go about. You could obviously do other strategies like verticals and things like that, buying calls if you're and call verticals if you don't want to sell as much or just outlay as much premium to buy the full stock. Uh, the other thing you could do is put that premium you're collecting to work. Again, this is for names where you think there are maybe poised to rip in the near future. Then things like we talked about in the past, like bullish risk reversals, can be your friend. Now you're not going to keep. All that, let's say 50 cents that you sold for that put, you're not going to keep all that. In fact, you might end up spending some money. A name like SMR, guess what? The calls are going to be bid higher than the puts because people are looking at upside in these names more than downside. So if you're going to sell a out of the money or maybe at the money puts, and you're going to put that to work buying a call, you have to go a decent ways out of the money to make those line up one-to-one -one if you do want to do those for, at the very least, even money. So maybe realistically, you could have sold the let's say seven or seven half put, whatever strike you were looking at, and then probably bought probably close to the 10, maybe even the 11 strike, depending on how bid. I have, again, I haven't looked at the options in the last week or so, but they were bid last time I checked. So probably going to be a much higher strike you have to buy to keep it premium neutral. So bear that in mind. But that is one way. Now you would have what is effectively a much higher delta position. You're selling an at-the-money put, so that's a 50 delta. Remember, you're selling a negative Delta, so that's positive delta. And then on top of that, you're buying an out of the money call. So let's say you bought a 25 delta call. Now you're long 75 deltas and you have the call. So if it does rip and it has ripped past the 11 handle, so now you'd be participating on all that. And guess what? These calls are bit anyway. So that 11 strike call, yeah, you just broke through it, but it would have been shooting to high heaven much earlier, given what we were just talking about earlier. Remember the junk calls in VIX? You see a similar effect in some of these crazy. Mimi names like this is a small nuclear power name listeners so that's one way you could definitely go about it i like bullish risk reversals you have to just be careful because obviously you're putting that premium to work so if you're just there to harvest a premium this is not going to do it for you but if you're looking to capture an upside move then this is one way you could do it dan what are your thoughts on what uh lord walrus is laying down he's worried about missing rips and stocks but he likes selling puts sir um well i mean a couple of things uh when, think of think of it this way, like make this a mantra that you just you think about in the back of your mind always. Selling options is selling volatility. Buying options is buying volatility. And think of that statement in every possible context. You can think of it in terms of vague implied volatility, gamma, or you could think of it as just volatility means stock moves a lot. You know, low volatility means stock doesn't move a lot. So if you're selling any option, basically you're betting that the stock isn't going to move a lot. Like that's the bet you're making. Now, selling puts, there's, I mean, I guess there's more of a, of a risk to the downside because it's a positive delta trade. You lose more, but you give up so much more as, as you're talking about here. So choose the names that you're, you're thinking about pretty wisely. Uh, you know, I'm looking at a chart of this thing and geez, Louise, this sucker moved from like two and a half to 11 in, what is this, like less than three weeks, I think. So 
I don't know if this is an ideal candidate for selling puts or covered calls for that matter. Another thing that makes this particular stock not a perfect candidate either is the just the fact that it's below 10 bucks. I mean, yes, the implied volatility. You well, know, yeah, I don't know. Actually, looking at these option prices, this implied volatility is pretty darn high, but it, it's high for a reason. Um, it, it's high because you leave so much on the table if it takes off to the upside and you just get it stuffed down your throat if it takes off to the downside. So I don't know. I think if you just keep that one simple little, you know, mantra in mind, it'll take you pretty far with these decisions. That music means we're coming up against it. Let's get out of here with this one really quickly, Dan. A question, another good handle, Granddad Joe. He's got a question for you. He wants to know, does, does Dan trade VIX? Very simple. Ah, um, I I have traded it in the past, and uh, uh, I've been talking about it. I've been looking to jump back into it, uh, but, you know, I had the retreat. They kept me busy for about a month, and I'm launching the Zero Day Hero uh, this week. Um, so that is something that I'm looking to get back into. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time trading VXX and some of that stuff in the volatility complex. What's your go-to VIX trade? You just buying calls, swinging for the fences, you're doing verticals. Uh, how do you go about it? Um, yeah, it was very situational. I mean, what I really like to do is wait until it pops and then sell some call spreads. Ah, interesting. Kind of the uh, the inverse of what everyone expects out mm -hmm. there from VIX. I like it. All right, Dan, if folks want to learn about that uh, selling call spreads and VIX strategy or anything else, sir, where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, make your way on over to markettaker.com and hit me up. Uh, glad to help however I can. Hit the man up, markettaker.com. Don't forget the second T for theta. In this case, tasty, delicious, or perhaps gross banana theta. Listen, I'm going to get on that <laughs> in between episodes. Uh, Chiquita, here I come with a proposal that's going to blow your mind. In the meantime, listeners, if you want to blow your mind, maybe just try out a new platform, public.com, the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. Let them know you heard about them on this network and indeed on this show. They will be very happy to hear that. And also, they'll be happy to hear your feedback on what they have cooking. And maybe you want to kick the tires on some of those rebates they got cooking over there as well, which certainly are intriguing. We love new entrants into the option space. We certainly like ones that bring something new to the table. And Public is doing just that. Public.com, the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. That's going to do it for us on this double header of options boot camp. But we're not done on the network today, not by a long shot. The producer is keeping me busy, listeners. I'll be back in about 25 minutes, right after this one, <laughs> for another pro Q&A session. Should be an awesome one, so stay tuned for that. If you want to check that out, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the only place you get your hands on those. Of course, you get access to this one and the other 350-odd episodes we have up there waiting for you. The second you hit that button, you also get, of course, options oddities at the end of every week. And you get great giveaways like our Pro Trading Crate. It's almost time. Man, June flying by. Almost time to give away the June Pro Trading Crate live streams, early access to content, a whole bunch more. You got to be in there. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. Back with our usual array of content. Remember, we're back on Spotify, so that should help all you folks out on the Spotify side. We'll see you back here next Education Wednesday, another episode of Options Bootcamp. Stay safe out there, everybody. Check out public.com if you want to literally earn money to place options trades. There are no commissions or per contract fees. And public gives you a rebate of up to 18 cents per contract traded. Discover why NerdWallet recently gave options trading on public five out of five stars. And start paying less than zero dollars to trade options. Only at public.com. Paid for by public investing. Options not suitable for all investors and carry significant risk. Full disclosures in podcast description, U.S. members only. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. 
select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 